Booyah. Always fun. All right. Got that. Got that. Boom. Now we should be good. We almost did a capital E thing. What up? What up? What up? What up? Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Doo, doo, doo. Happy Tuesday. Today is Tuesday, February 13th. Man, I'm in the lab this morning. I did a little run, still getting a little foggy in the glasses, getting warmed up this morning. So I hope y'all are having a good Tuesday and everything is rolling for you. So... Here we go. Today's subject is failure, man. I was on last night with a couple of the members of my team and, you know, the subject <coughs> just seems to be over and over again, failure, right? How do we handle failure? You know, what? I'm gonna pause for a minute. Watch this. Booyah. See if I can get this situated. Nah, I don't like that. So we're just gonna go white white. Failure. There it was right there. Tried it, didn't like it, adjusted, moved on. So how do you handle failure, man? How are you helping your kids adjust to failure? How do you handle failure? How did you handle it growing up, moving forward, right? As a player, uh, how do they handle failure? Good morning, Cyrus. Good morning. I know you like my screen. I tried it. I probably should have had it set up before I started uh, but I didn't. This morning, I was failing failing to cool down because I am sweating quite a bit this morning. But you know what? We're going to work through it together. So failure, man. Have you failed at anything in your life? God knows I have, right? I've been failing since the day I showed up, right? Bad lungs, short height, no hair, right? Like everything moving in the wrong direction, uh, you know, I failed in school. I didn't make it out of high school. I dropped out of high school in the 10th grade. You know, my grades were probably B's and C's when I left, but mentally I wasn't engaged and I wasn't focused on that. So at the time it was a failure for me to be able to continue on that path. Maybe it was a failure of others around me to push and motivate or whatever. But to me, it was my decision, something I pushed for. It was in the long run, a decent decision, but at the time, myself and everybody else saw it and felt it as a failure, right? Because I moved away from what was the common theme, what was norm, what everybody was supposed to do, right? And, you know, at a younger age, a couple years before I got into the Navy, I tried to join the Army because I had made mistakes when I was 16, 17 years old, I failed to be able to do that. The, the requirements that they had, the requirements that need to be met, I didn't get in. I didn't, I wasn't able to do it, right? I'm, I'm on, you know, uh, an opportunity to be able to continue to push forward through all of that failure. And funny, today's topic in our book, if you could read it right there, February 13th is the power of of failure. This book is kind of following me this year and kind of rolling around because yesterday on these talks, man, and even on the one that I didn't have, right? I had uh, another coach that had sent in a pretty lengthy email and this is what I'm doing in my program, right? I'm passing out. I gave this guy and these young ladies, I gave them a whole lot of questions throughout the week and they're getting another round today of how do we handle pressure? How do we handle anxiety? When we step into the box, when we step in to the box of life, how are we handling failure? What tools are we being given to actually learn, accept, and grow from failure, right? Because a lot of times, man, I, 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 you get perfect syndrome. I don't know if it's a thing, right? But it's the cause and effect of wanting perfection, Right? And whether that's because somebody has drilled into your whole life that perfection is the only acceptable standard or whether you think that perfection is the only acceptable standard because 
you want to get away or get out and you feel like if you stay the same, but either way, you're causing and generating anxiety because you haven't learned how to work through failure. It says, try to see failure as a learning experience today. Success does not mean avoiding failure. All of us fail as we travel. We all hit potholes, take wrong turns and forget to check the radiator. Man, that's called making mistakes every single day, right? Every single day. Good morning, Tyler. How you doing, sir? I'm looking forward to having Tyler on our uh, newly formed uh, Taco Tuesday Talks. Tyler is the owner of Major League uh, Painting in Pasco County. He's a good friend of mine, and uh, he's running a kickball tournament this weekend. So if you are in the Pasco County area and you want to go out and see a lot of fun and support the Rap House, go out and see Tyler and support the kickball tournament this weekend. I hear they have an opening for a team still. So maybe you contact him, Tyler Hardigan. So failure, man, how do you deal with failure, man? Let's talk specifically right now, failure in relationships, right? I have had, you know, success in the last 10 years of, of my relationship, some success before that, but quite frankly, I didn't know how to be a father. I didn't know how to be a good husband. When you just grow, you don't just jump into those things. You don't just go, hey, uh, hi, Bill Hoops here. I am the perfect father and the perfect husband, and I know everything about life. That's not how it works, man. You learn and grow through the failure, and hopefully you have somebody that's patient enough to help you learn and grow through that failure, or hopefully you are patient enough to help somebody learn and grow through that failure because that's relationships, man. That's how you engage successful long-term relationships. You know, my wife and I split up twice in the early years of our relationship, twice in the first three years, 100% because I didn't know how to lead, I didn't know how to follow, I didn't know how to give, I didn't know how to take, I didn't know how to treat, I didn't know how to protect. You know, her mother called me plum immature and told me I wasn't ready for what I was getting into when I was 24 years old. And I took offense to that at a time. And boy, after so much failure of not knowing how to do those things, you know, I was able to learn and grow. But after that failure, right, when my wife and I split up the second time, I took myself to marriage counseling. I used my Navy TRICARE benefit and I said, someone needs to fix this because I don't want to have a second wife or a third wife or a fourth wife or any of that failure. So you have to take back a step and look at the failure. So in your relationship, like how are you doing? How are you progressing? How are you moving forward, right? I brought some things down here, right? It says, embrace failure as a learning opportunity. Understand that failure is a natural part of the learning process and use it as a chance to grow and improve your skills. Embrace failure as a learning opportunity, right? Failure should be seen as feedback, right? If this was a negative response, if I did not do well in this situation, if I didn't get the outcome I wanted, if I failed to see what was relevant at the time, or I did not follow through with what I needed to, how can I learn, adjust, move forward, make corrections, and use that failure as feedback, right? How do I identify weaknesses? When we fail, it highlights areas where we need improvement. By recognizing these weaknesses, we can focus efforts on developing specific skills and strategies for finding success through Failure. Unsuccessful people are often so afraid of failure and rejection, they spend their whole lives avoiding risk or decisions that could lead to failure. Are you wanting to do something, but you don't do it because it might not go the way you plan? Man, that's called fear. Fear of failure. What holds you back from greatness? What holds you back from moving forward and developing a positive mindset to say, man, I'm not going to accept this failure. I'm going to learn from it. I'm going to use it as feedback. I'm going to use it as an opportunity to learn and grow so I can go through everything I need to and gain that experience, right? There was a debate on Facebook the other day on when can somebody teach 
When can somebody teach? What level of experience is required for somebody to teach? What level of experience is required for somebody to get online and, and get in person or get in a seminar or get in a group and speak? I don't know. What level of experience is required? Right? Do you have to build a house in order to be able to talk about building a house? Do you have to grow a plant in order to talk about being able to grow a plant? I guess that provides credibility and experience, of course. But you have to start that process through failure. You don't ever get to become what you've become without a process of failure along the way. That's just not how it works. Good morning, Nick Yeary. We are taking on the day, sir. You don't get to get to the mountaintop, okay, and successful, whatever success means to you. Success does not, there's another debate that was online. Success does not mean I'm business successful. Man, I'm 44 years old, right? I've only owned a business for eight years and another one for 18 months, but I've been married for 21. I've been a father for 23, right? I've been a human being for 44. I've been a son for 44. I've been a brother for 44, right? I've been a taxpaying citizen since I was 18 years old. So there's been opportunity there for all of that, okay? Develop a growth mindset. Instead of viewing failure as, re as uh, instead of viewing failure as reflection of your abilities, adapt a growth mindset and focus on the effort, the process, Man, I was talking to somebody the other day and, you know, this person said, you know what, I, I hit 600, right? I hit 600 and, you know, my fielding percentage was 10 for 10. I had 10 balls hit to me, a couple in the gap, a couple right out in front, a couple where I had to come across. I had 10 balls hit to me and I was perfect. Zero errors, Right? But that last at bat that I got up to the plate, boom, I struck out. So now this poor, amazing young mind has literally been focused on that strikeout. And I love it, right? I love it because that is a growth mindset. But I want to make sure that we're understanding the difference between, oh my God, I struck out, I'm no good, right? And not understanding my girl, you hit 600, you went three for five, you did what you needed to do for your team, you were 100% in your fielding percentage, right? You, you stole bases, you didn't get thrown out, you made zero errors, you were cheering, leading, focusing, taking on the world, right? And we focus on that failure more than anything else. Good morning, Lance. Good morning, good morning. Right? Each individual result doesn't dictate who you are and the next time your name is called. That's Coach Rob. That's correct. Right? That is correct. But failure is going to happen. And this young, beautiful mind, guys, she was just focused on the failure. Okay? So we have to dictate and help mold that to failure is feedback. It's not final. You understand the difference? It's feedback. Okay, boom, I swung at the high pitch. Okay, so what do I need to do now? I need to find my pitch, right? The mind goes, okay, I swung at a high pitch, so she's going to throw me another high pitch. Oh, no, wait, I thought she was going to throw me a high pitch, but instead, she was smart. She threw me an inside changer. Oh, oh, now I'm 0-2. What do I do? What am I going through? I have to find something new. Right? So change the mindset. You're not looking for a specific pitch. You're looking for a pitch that you can drive through the zone. You're looking through your pitch. Slow the failure process down so that we can break it into small pieces so that we can adjust to it and find feedback and let them understand that it's not final. Right? This game and this game of life will continue to give it back to you until the last pitch. And it'll continue to take it away from you and it'll continue to rewind and fast forward and do all of that. Does that make sense? Oh man, build resistance. Failure tests our resilience and mental toughness. It challenges us to bounce back, learn from our failures, and keep moving forward. Overcoming failure builds resilience, which is a valuable trait in sports 
and life. Coach, how do you overcome failure? You know, somebody said that they were impulsive, right? I'm impulsive, right? Like, man, I'm like Tigger, <laughs> right? That's what I do best, right? And when you're, in, when you're impulsive and you're high energy and it's working, like everybody loves you. Oh yeah, that's my coach. They got all the energy in the world. Rile them kids up, get them motivated, right? But when you, in a split second, use that same energy to go, ha, 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 right? Well, now... Just like the player is already beating themselves up because they struck out or because they made an error or because they goofed up or because they weren't where they needed to be, right? We as the coach are now beating ourselves up going, ah, mm, E10, E10, mark it in the book. That's an E10, right? So you have to learn how to control that. You have to learn how to give yourself a break, right? You have to learn how to practice self-compassion as a player. We talked about this last night. You have to learn how to develop self-compassion, right? To not beat yourself over the head every single time you make a mistake. And as coaches and as parents, we have to learn how to not beat them up every single time. To let them know then they're, that they're better than their last at bat. Right? Even if they hit the home run, they're better than their last at bat. Because their next at bat, chances are, unless they're on a hot streak, aren't going to be, isn't going to be a home run again. They'll get another one, but it's probably not going to be their next one. Right? So I, you have to flip the mentality. You have to lead positively. You have to make sure that what you're doing, what you're saying, what you're throwing, what you're spewing, is helping grow and mold a mental mindset that says, I can take on anything in this world, that my journey is going to be led in a positive way, that I'm going to be moved in a positive direction, that I'm going to be able to step into the batter's box of life and take it on. Because I tell you, I rest assured, the people that have been doing this for a while know what I'm talking about. The journey is of this game at some point in time does in fact end. And when it does, they go through something and the better support system they have to get to the end of the journey, the better they understand failure, the better that they understand the opportunities that they've had to learn and grow and be good to go, the better off they are going to be when that finish line comes because they'll be able to take the jersey off, hang it up on the wall, right? And then handle anything else that life throws at them because they have learned through failure. They've, somebody said it last night, right? They've been given grace. It's the best thing we can give our kids. It's the best thing we can give our team. It's the best thing that we can give ourselves, right? It's an opportunity to accept failure as feedback, not accept it as final, but accept it as feedback, right? Successful people don't let failure go to their heads. Instead, on dwelling on the negative consequences of failure, thinking of what might have been and how things haven't worked out, they focus on the rewards of success. Man, if there's one thing that I could get through, right? to these young, beautiful minds that are pushing forward and growing and going is that statement right there. Instead of dwelling on negative consequences of failure, thinking about what might have been, okay? I've got a runner at third. I'm up to bat. I've got an opportunity for my team to score. I've got to come through. Heck yes, you do, girl. And that's all we're going to push for you to think is that you are great in the moment. You are special in the moment. You are wonderful in the moment. And that you will have the opportunity to breathe and believe so that you can achieve and slow that pitch down to find the moment that you need. And then if you're the pitcher in the circle, same thing, that same pressure, that same feeling, that battle, knowing that somebody is going to win, and somebody is going to fail, but that that failure is feedback, not final, and a learning and growing moment so that when we get to where we're going, we can handle all of that. Bruh, come on.
Come on, right? Come on. So, listen. Practice mental toughness. Develop mental resilience and strength. Practice that. Coaches, are you practicing mental toughness? Are you teaching? Are you educating? When you're in practice, when you're on the field, do you point or do you engage, right? Do you sit and talk or do you engage, right? Are you willing to accept failure for yourself and looking goofy and maybe having to learn and maybe being wrong in order to learn and grow to make sure your players and your team and everybody has everything they need? Are you prepared for that? Man. Engage, man. Absolutely need to engage. Try to see failure as a learning experience today. Ultimately, failure provides us with valuable feedback and opportunities for growth. It challenges us to step out of our comfort zones, learn from our mistakes, and become better athletes and individuals. Man, how do you handle failure? Today, I challenge you. I want you to really think internally. How do I handle failure? How do I handle when I am not successful? Right? What gets me fired up? So fired up that I go to do something. So fired up that I go to get something done and I do it for one day, two days, three days, four days, and then boom, something happens and I fail and my mindset goes back to it was and I don't see the results that I want. What gives you the continued pace to push through failure? And that's something that's got to burn internally. That's something that you have to find directly. That's something that you have to reach out and and feel, right? And it comes from a mean and a mode and a passion within you that says, you know what? I'm going to put my pride down. I'm going to pick up some humility. I'm going to accept failure. I'm going to understand that, you know what? I failed. And now I'm going to use that as feedback and I'm going to learn, and I'm going to grow, and I'm going to develop better problem-solving skills, right? I need to learn and grow. Am I reading? Do I have any good books on leadership, on learning and understanding failure? Am I part of any good groups? Man, I'm in a mentorship group. I'm in online training sessions. I go to seminars. I go to mental health, different talks. I go to different webinars. I'm in different networking groups. I am constantly trying to sharpen this sword, so that I can be my best self moving forward to be able to not only lead my journey, but help others level up to get where they need to be. Man, I'm so excited. I put our logo, there's eight logo concepts. So if you didn't go on my page and look at the logo concepts, I want you to go on there and give it a vote. Give me your top one or two. I think number four is leading right now Two. 2A might be, you know, right there with it. So there's eight concepts up there. Um, And there it is, man. I mean, let's talk about growth and failure, right? Like I'm just shooting for the stars, right? I've thrown this message out. I'm building a team. I'm building a team. I'm asking people to trust years of experience. I'm asking them to trust educational experience, right? I'm not just the guy that slings tacos and runs tournaments, right? Don't forget, I've got 20 years uh, of military experience. I've got a master's degree in uh, youth leadership, education, and policy. I've got a degree from the Department of Labor and Counseling and Therapy uh, based off a uh, internship that I did almost 3,000 hours, right? I've got a lot of formal education. I'm a form, I'm a, I'm a licensed teacher in the state of Florida, You know, and now I've been running my own businesses for the last eight years and we're opening more restaurants this year. We've brought on more people. We're hiring more teams. And through that whole process, we have failed and we have fallen on our face and we have canceled tournaments and we have let people go at the store and we have built and broken down and started and stopped and went left and went right. And now we're standing right here, right now, through all of that, saying, you know what? Failure is feedback. And if you can fight through that failure and you can take that feedback and you can push forward and embrace it as a learning opportunity, if you can then take that journey of 
where you're going and whether you're practicing on the field, you're practicing in school, you're practicing in life, you're practicing at home, you're practicing with your husband or your wife or your children or your life or whatever it is that you're practicing with purpose and passion and you're embracing failure as a step to move forward and learn from the things that you have done well and your successes and more importantly from the things that have not gone the way you wanted them to and you ride that wave of success to where you're going and you ride that monitoring wave of failure on where you're going and you're not one of those people that just says, you know what? I failed. I'm done. I'm out. I can't handle it. It's too much. Oh, strike one. Oh, well, you know, somebody said, somebody said, you know what? I knew that they were going to do this just by their body language. I knew this was going to happen just by their body language. All right? Well, don't, don't be that predictable in failure, right? Help talk that person through. Right? Instead of talking about the failure, talk about the body language, talk about the internal tightness, talk about the anxiety level going up that creates the failure. Right? Too often we forget to talk about the need behind the need, the result behind the action, what led up to the problem. Right? Did we fail at the plate by striking out? Or did we fail prior to that because our anxiety level rose because of, of pressure and expectations and the improper tools to be able to handle those? Are we cutting off what is causing and creating the problem? Or are we only thinking about the end result and what the problem was and how to fix that, right? Because if you always focus on the swing, then you're always going to focus on the T. But if you focus on the hands that are holding the bat and how those come to the heart and how that rates to the brain and how all of that has to come together to slow a process down, feel a heartbeat slow down, take the moment and slow it down so that failure becomes less and less. And then finally right? With that process, you have to re-educate on what acceptable failure is in sport. Okay. Because it's different in our game. It's different in our game because their whole life, they are trained from the time they are wee little big that they get graded and grades equal success. Come on. They go into pre-K, you know, and, and I don't know if it's pre-K, but kindergarten, they're getting S's and E's, and then they get into first grade, and it becomes A's and B's, and we as parents, not many of you go on there and go, check out my DNF student. She rocked the box this week, but you all go out there and go, check out my A, B student, my straight A student, every one of these little emails I got, and of course, straight A's. Ooh, man, if I would have put the pressure of straight A's on my kids, it would have been a tough, tough place to live in my house. My kids were not straight A kids. My son struggles in math. I struggle in math. I had to take the math test to become a teacher nine times. Talk about failure. $275 a piece. But in order to keep my career, I had to keep fighting through failure, right? So I passed that down inherently to him. He doesn't like math and I'm no good at it to be able to help him. So there's some failure there, right? Oh man, let's see what else we got. What else we got? Boy. So keep moving forward, man. Keep processing forward. Try to see failure as a learning experience today. You know, go out and look at your failures. Go out and look at them and analyze them and give yourself a break for them and then go set on how to achieve them and fix them again, right? Look at your team. If you're a coach, look at your failures and I would guarantee you that most of them are not failures. You went 0-4 in a tournament? Okay. <clears throat> Is the team a failure? I wish somebody would call my team that, right? 
it depends on how you handle it. If you, as the coach, oh, well, guys, 0-4, oh you know, oh, well, you know, the other team this and the umpires that, and, you know, how are you handling and accepting that failure, right? In business, is it your marketing plan? Is it your journey? Is it your, what is it? Why is failure knocking on your door and how do you handle it? So, tools, man, tools, some good tools. It's what you need. All right, baby. Well, that's it. It's 9-10. Most of you should be at work. I ran a little long today. I ran over. That's a failure on my part. I guess we'll have to learn and adjust. I hope y'all have a great day. I hope y'all continue to rise. I hope y'all continue to learn and grow and use a positive mindset to move forward in the right direction, right? Continue to monitor <clears throat> your failure. Continue to push through the things that don't go your way. Continue to foster and identify weaknesses. You are gaining experience every single time. Every time something doesn't go your way, you're building resilience, you're developing problem skills, you're making everything you need in order to be successful along your journey. So guys, I appreciate you this morning. Thanks for jumping on. Thanks for the comments. Keep engaging. Keep staying fresh. Uh, check out the logo on my page. Rob, I hope you're feeling better, buddy. I hope you have a great day. I hope that upper respiratory infection is, uh, you know, working its way out. Breathe, brother. Breathe. <laughs> Breathe. All right, man. And finally, get it. It's right there. Build that brand. 60 for me. Speaking of brand building, we about to light the world on fire. We about to light the world on fire. It's going to be a great day, man. Enjoy your Tuesday, right? Taco Tuesday. Our Taco Tuesday talks start next week. We'll be doing some shows from our uh, restaurant every Tuesday. So if you want to be on that show, you can be anybody. Softball coach, Rob, come in the store, have lunch. We'll go live. We'll talk softball, right? Business person, come in. We'll talk business. We'll talk entrepreneurship, right? Parent, come on in. We'll talk parenting. We'll talk life. Uh, husband, wife, we'll talk marriage. We'll talk whatever. Let's just talk about working through failure, making each other better, and moving forward in a positive direction. Y'all have a great day, man. Hoops out.